Ian Polo Uribe asks, how do you do aerobic work as a sprinter or any fast explosive athlete without adapting slow twitch stroke getting slower? It's a great question. Uh, yeah, it's a great question because theoretically you don't. Theoretically, you every training move you make pushes you in a specific direction. So if you're a sprinter, you only sprint specifically. But obviously, we all know you have to do some sort of aerobic work. You have to train those different pathways, right? How sprinters tend to do it and then how different athletes in different sports tend to do it are different. So what you'll see a lot of the time with sprinters is they'll do quite high volumes in the longer distances. So 200, 400, 600, 800 meters in their off season or like even in the early parts of their season. Then when they start to transition in, that the, the amount of longer distance runs they do will reduce down fairly significantly. They'll still have a certain amount of them in there. So they might still do one or two sessions a week where they might have some 600 and 800 meter runs in there. Uh, obviously, they're still doing slightly longer distance runs as they're warming up, as they're moving through different parts of the cycle. But most of the time, sprinters will do the majority of their aerobic work out of season. And then they'll just work to maintain that in season. Now, when you talk about any other fast, explosive athletes and what that looks like and how they kind of maintain it, they tend to do it in more of a concurrent manner. So they'll tend to have a session every week or a piece of a session every week where they're quite aerobically focused. Depending on the sport, if you're like a field sports player or a hockey player, you're predominantly a fast and explosive athlete. There's obviously a a significant aerobic element to it. In those cases, it is just one or two standalone sessions a week or one or two periods of a session uh, a week where you work on your aerobic work. And you might work in it more in a pre-season block. So most of the time off-season will be strength, power, speed development. Pre-season will be aerobic development and maintenance of strength, speed and power. And then in season, you try and maintain all those variables as they gradually decay away through the playing of your sport. Uh, so that's generally how you would do it, or that's generally how most teams and athletes would do it. It's um, it's it's probably like one of the most important questions any coach would be asking themselves, you know, yeah. or, or looking to get when they're coaching anyone going fast. And I think like if you're an athlete and you're even thinking about this in any way, I think you're off to a great start as an athlete. Like you're a foot ahead of a lot of other athletes in some, in some scenarios, you know um that that kind of periodization or that blocking of training that i was talking about uh is what you see w working in the real world in athletes yeah. now what you do see is that you see type 2x um changing to type 2a and then type 2a changing to slow twitch fibers um now you asked later Jen, is it true that you can only convert slow twitch and not the fast twitch so that's not true so there you can go from slow twitch to type 2a but what we don't see is type 2A going to type 2X. And we don't seem to see that happening. Uh, you can certainly, the proportion of fibers can change in either direction based on your training. Now, things that will affect this is genetics, uh, training history. I would bet even nutrition to a tiny extent, like I'm talking like a 0.5% would affect that. Uh, your environment, um, obviously the style of training is very, very important for that. Uh, performance enhancing drug use is hugely hugely related to this i'll tell you a funny one about this so um they did a study on sheep right and they put uh electric stim uh electric sim sim contractile machines on sheep's lats and they measured they took a biopsy and they measured the uh the values of or the proportionality of fast twitch and slow twitch so what percentage there was before and after the use of a performance sensing drug or well a, an anabolic steroid primobolin and they went from something like something like 10 percent fast stitch fibers in the sheep's lats after the study for a few weeks and so they contracted the muscle for them you know yeah 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 while giving them the performance sensing drugs and it went from like 90 slow twitch to 10 percent fast to something like 90 percent fast twitch no way to like to, like nine to ten percent slow twitch so e even in the absence of form sensing drugs I and mean, that's a funny anecdote but uh you can certainly change now i think as your career goes on um as your body you know 
the more history of a certain environment and homeostasis your body is in, I think the harder will be to go in the extremes of either one of those, you know, to get to a certain place. Um, certain things like we mentioned will make it easier or harder for certain people. Uh, but the longer, you know, if you spend a career doing endurance running, you know, you spend 20 odd years from the ages of 15 to uh, 35 doing endurance running, the, what's the likelihood you'll be able to become a high level Olympic lifter, even if your genetics were predisposed to it at the age of 35 in the absence of performance anti drugs? Uh, probably pretty low. Uh, so the longer you go, in a certain scenario, the longer you've reinforced a certain behavior and a certain type of muscle composition, uh, metabolic behavior, uh, motor habits and stuff like that, the harder it'll be. Not that I say you can't, it just makes it much more difficult. So I will say as well on this, a lot of what you're seeing when you do training isn't necessarily a fiber type shift, you know. So when when Owen goes through a training period and, and he sees an increase in his snatch or an increase in his clean and jerk, he's probably not seeing a fiber type shift there. He's trained for a long time. Uh, he's probably not even seeing like a proportional increase in one size of a fiber type compared to the other, which is what most of us will experience. Most of us won't actually proportionally shift from a fast to a slow or from a slow to a fast. All that will happen is the actual fibers on one side will shrink and the other side will swell. So the fast which Owen has will swell versus the slow to which he has will reduce. But a lot of what you actually see is auxiliary factors to that so in the case of a sprinter going and doing his or her aerobic work it's probably not that as she gets or he gets more fit and their aerobic values and their aerobic tests increase it's probably not due to a fiber type shift or anything to do with the fibers it's probably down to a host of other additional factors because i think people definitely do get caught in the weeds a small bit with the really needing to be specific and if if i work on my aerobic work i'm going to slow myself down that's assuming you've maxed out all the other things that's assuming all of your mitochondrial density has been maxed out all of your red blood cells and, and hemoglobin has been maxed out all of your other your lung capacity all of that has been maximized that's realistically not going to happen for most people now if you're usain bolt and they're asking you to do a 5k jog every day it's very, very likely you're going to have a negative shift from, from fast to slow. But for most people, a small bit of aerobic work won't actually bring about a fiber type shift, assuming you're still doing your speed and your power and your, your strength work. Yeah, there, I think that was definitely correct in that. It's not as susceptible as you think to change, uh, even though there is some research to show that after one session, a change can occur. But I think that's like a low threshold change. So it's like... If, um, like, if we just talk about that runner who did running for 20 years, if they suddenly do a bit of power training, that that certain amount, that kind of, you're just at that baby and, like, those big beginner gains and that fast switch stuff, like, that will, I could, I bet it would be smaller and smaller as the time went on, the, the change after single session. So you do see a fiber type change. There's a possibility of happening after one session. But I think... It's minute, and I think the impact is very, very low. I think it's minimal. I think even across, and I think this will be backed up by anecdotal evidence and all of the kind of block periodization you see people do, is even after a training block, like a six-week period of, of uh, GPP phase or aerobic stuff, I think the actual magnitude of change that its impact on your actual performance would be pretty low because we do see that being highly useful for an athlete's performance at the end of the day. So... Even if there's a fast exchange, it seems to be massively outweighed by that block periodization or those GPP phases or those prep phases and they're integral to the programming or smart program. You do see it work very well. So even if they do incur a, a small change, you know, even if they incur um, a little bit of like fiber type distribution to slow twitch, uh, it doesn't seem to be to a magnitude of uh, of of anything meaningful, you know. So it yeah. certainly can happen. It's definitely certain you should be aware of, but I would put good training principles first before I would put uh, is this action activating and reinforcing slow twitch movements.